pretty young girls giggled as they discussed the rich guest. I was told it was a Pole, a relative of our Queen Maria Lachinska, said one girl. Didn't you hear him? He's a French aristocrat. He speaks without an accent, said another girl. In the evening, a charming gentleman entered the small villa. He was about 30 or 40 years old. He looked around anxiously. The servants hurried to close the door behind the mysterious gentleman. The man exhaled and relaxed a little. Not that he was much afraid of being judged, but times were different in mid-18th century France, and subjects would have condemned the King of France himself for an evening like this. In 1750, the romantic relationship between Louis XV and Madame de Pompadour came to an end. The Marquis suffered from gynecological diseases, poor health, and periodic pains. Nevertheless, she remained a close friend of the king. But Louis, as a man, had his own physiological needs. Madame de Pompadour spent many nights in contemplation until she came to the conclusion the king does not need favorites from the aristocracy to avoid court intrigues and privacy. Young and modest girls were sought in Paris by the Marquise de Pompadour. The requirements for the girls were high, uneducated, but from the bourgeoisie, young, not yet in contact with men. Louis XV was a king complex and modest, as if cornered. He despised political affairs and court intrigues. He was afraid of assertive women and of contracting syphilis, which was not uncommon at the French court. Some justified the king. It was said that there was nothing objectionable in his royal harem. Many princes and dukes personally went to the harem, but let's recognize the fact that being king is a burden and a responsibility. And political matters must take precedence over thinking about how to keep a secret about young favorites. His entourage only indulged the king's weaknesses. But back to his young favorites. Young girls were smuggled into the palace. Several times a week, the king would sneak down a secret staircase along the walls of Versailles to a small room on the mezzanine above his inner apartments. Soon rumors of this mysterious place spread throughout the court, and the king had to find another hiding place for his pastimes. This place was an old game preserve used during the reign of Louis XIV. It was called Parc Oser. The mansion was renovated and is now a small seraglio for the royal concubines. According to various sources, from one to five girls lived here at a time, and in total, during the entire existence of the Parc Oser, up to 50 girls. The place was kept secret, so no one wrote detailed memoirs. Louis XV visited his young favorites through many secret passages. In the apartment, there were only a maid, a footman, and a servant. Occasionally, the Marquise de Pompadour's maid would go into the park a seer to see if the girls needed anything. Some of the minions didn't even know who their guest was. Others, more astute, quickly guessed that it was the king himself. The families of these girls voluntarily gave their daughters to the royal harem for a generous reward. Pregnant girls were cared for and then given a generous dowry. Many then married successfully, their husbands turning a blind eye to the child and the woman's past because of the impressive amount of money. And Louis XV himself, unlike Louis XIV, preferred not to legitimize his illegitimate children. The girls at the Deer Park ranged in age from 14 to 25. Louis XV preferred younger favorites, but a girl who was too frightened embarrassed the king, and she hurried to end the evening. A golden mean was needed. Two girls from Parc Osir are well remembered in the pages of history, the Irish Louise O'Murphy and Anne Coupier de Romance. One day, Louise wanted to take the place of the Marquise de Pompadour, and the next morning, she was thrown out of Parc Osir for speaking rudely to Pompadour. Louis XV did not want any of his young favorites at court. Anne Coupier de Romance also got into Parc Osir with the help of Giacomo Casanova. Louis called her, my great and beautiful. Anne had dark hair, very white skin, beautiful eyes, and a graceful, slender body. She reminded Louis of the young Marquise de Pompadour. Anne was always smiling. She had snow white teeth. She would invent something new for the king to take away his melancholy. Anne de Coupier then lived in a separate house in Passy because she refused to live like a concubine in a parc a -seer. She soon became pregnant. Louis legitimized their newborn son, registering him under the name Louis de Bourbon. 
Her baptismal certificate was forged in one of two registries with the desire to make Anne a noblewoman. The king granted her the title of Baroness de Mille Coulanges. This was not enough for Anne de Romance. She became arrogant and haughty, dreaming of more, of becoming the new official favorite. She had youth, beauty, nights with the king and a child. How could she be worse than the Marquise de Pompadour? But in 1765, at the age of 28, Anne de Romance was rejected by the king for her ambition after a five-year relationship. Louis XV provided a generous allowance of 500,000 pounds for Anne and her son. In 1772, she married Gabriel Guillaume de Ciron, Marquis de Cavanagh. A brilliant rise from merchant's daughter and peasant girl to Marquise. She managed to leave France before the revolution, lived in Spain, and returned to France a few years later with all her possessions. She died at the ripe old age of a millionaire, and the Parcassier ceased to exist in 1764 after the death of the Marquise de Pompadour. Louis XV realized that even young and inexperienced girls sooner or later show their ambitions. Probably the king wanted live and beautiful dolls without his desires and aspirations. And the Parc Seer is covered with legends about the insatiable king of France who keeps pretty maidens in captivity like frightened deer. <laughs>